Hi, this is Ron Ball, and I want to welcome you again to Choose Greatness, your key to a happier, better, greater life. We are exploring the principles that God has given us to create dynamic involvement in your life. This program is for you. Now, I want you to do, as I've asked you before, something very special to help us. I want you to contact all your friends, go on social media, text who you can, call people, contact all your neighbors, let them know Choose Greatness is on again. So while you're doing that, I want to introduce a special guest. You have watched us before, many of you, and you know how uh, this program is geared to helping you learn great principles that are real life experiences. And this is an opportunity for you as an audience, you as our viewers, to learn information that you might not get from other sources. The culture around us is in a warfare because there are so many forces that oppose godliness. And this is an opportunity for you, your children, your family to learn principles, key insights that will arm you in this conflict. We want you to win for God. We want your family to be positive and happy and successful. But most of all, we want your family to be blessed by God. My guest today is Tim Wildman, who is the president of the American Family Association. Tim, welcome very hey, much. Good We're morning. glad to have you. He is a veteran broadcaster. I've uh, been with him on his radio show more than once. He is very good, not to put any pressure, Tim, but yeah. you're, you're very good. And uh, I want to introduce his organization to you, although many of you, I'm sure, are familiar with AFA or the American Family Association. But I want you to understand where this organization comes from, how it was born, where, how it originated, what its vision really means for America. Tim, I've met your dad, uh, Don, and he uh, started this organization. Can you give us a quick uh, history lesson on where you came from? So you want me to pack 40 years into how long, <laughs> uh, Ron, exactly? Do uh, your yeah, best. I, I'll give you a little history lesson. Yeah, it was started by my dad, uh, the Ministry of American Family Association, in 1977. And he was a Methodist pastor, and we were living in a suburb of Memphis, Tennessee at the time. And he was uh, concerned at that time about what was happening with television. I'm talking about entertainment television, how it was moving away from the uh, I Love Lucy and Andy Griffith and, and the era, the golden era of television, as it were. And they were becoming, it was becoming more. Uh, uh, sex and violence and profanity being allowed more and more and more and how that was influencing our culture because at that time you remember there was only three channels right, right? i do remember so television well we're kind of dating ourselves yeah, a little bit but yeah i do remember that but i mean abc nbc and uh abc nbc and cbs basically they dominated uh, the american television culture and so uh their shows were watched by millions of people so they had great impact on on the society in fact uh norman lear Mm -hmm. was uh, he was one of the most successful television producers in history and he said I use my shows to impact social issues and in my liberal way of thinking I mean he was just open about it so anyway that's how my dad started he trying to give Christians a voice to respond to mm -hmm. what was going on uh, there and then uh, so so he he left the pastorate and started an organization at that time called the National Federation for Decency which later became the American Family Association. And it basically exists to give Christians a voice uh, in, uh, in the culture uh, for, uh, for righteousness, as the Bible says in Matthew chapter five, for decency, for morality, for Christian values. And so we promote those things unashamedly because we think that's good not only for the individual, for the family, but for our, our society at large. So your dad had a very definite and specific vision, even a calling from God. Oh, no question about it. My dad is a very, uh, uh, I would say, he doesn't get up every morning and say, the Lord told me to do such and such. Uh, not that people don't get spoke right, to like right. that by the Lord, but dad's a very level-headed, uh, I guess, uh, old-time Methodist, <laughs> you know. Follows the, God, follows the Lord, but right. uh, he doesn't... Uh, you, you know, he's not given to saying everything. is So when you know when he did what he did to leave the pulpit to start this ministry, he told me and he told everybody he heard the God. The, he heard God. How uh, old were you when he oh, did Oh, I was, uh, well, that would have been, I would have been 13 or 14 years old so at the time. So that was quite a life change mid, for you and your family. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, it was really a shock for our family because my dad has, uh, we, he was had a, a nice house church mm -hmm. and, uh, 
you know, in the Methodist uh, community, you you get moved to different churches depending right, on right. how you do, right? Uh, so he he had moved up to a fairly large church and in the in the uh, in, in where we lived. So to to leave that and then start something new with no income, mm -hmm. you know, with no, I mean, God did provide. Obviously, here we are, 40 years later. But right. uh, to leave something to do this work uh, was uh, something that was a shock to our mm -hmm. system, so to speak, as a family. But God called him to do this work, and here we are, 40 years later. In fact, I was talking to you um, off the off the television set about how my dad was uh, a guest of uh, the Crouches, mm -hmm. uh, TBN. You mentioned uh, that, uh, yes. Yeah, back in the s s late 70s and 80s, because uh, I remember once or twice flying out with my dad to uh, Santa Ana to be on with uh, the Crouches. So we, we had a relationship with TBN back then. That's exciting. Yeah. And I want to say something to all of you watching. Uh, one of the great priorities of this program is to encourage you, to train you, to equip you so that you personally can make a stand for Jesus Christ in your own uh, part of society, wherever you live. Uh, it's important that you understand the issues and know how to fight the battles in the right way. And the purpose of this program today is to help you do exactly that. So when uh, Tim's dad started this particular outreach, this mm -hmm. ministry, uh, I'm sure it wasn't easy, so I'm going to ask Tim to explain some mm -hmm. of the challenges because when you take a stand for Jesus, you will get opposition. You will get um, uh, adversarial uh, uh, opposition from different people who will try to stop you. Mm -hmm. And so I want you to listen carefully to this next segment because what was it like when your dad started? Mm -hmm. Was everybody on board? Did everybody encourage him? Or did some people oh. just not understand what he was trying to do? Uh, that one. <laughs> that one. Uh, that, well, you had uh, two different uh, looks at the way Dad was doing, uh, what Dad was doing. And then that one of them was, you know, the Christian view. And that was, as I said earlier, standing for righteousness mm -hmm. and, and uh, values and right. morality and those things that the Scripture says we as Christians should live by and also stand for in culture. So Dad was doing that. At the same time, though, when you criticize uh, the networks, for example, for sex violence and profanity on TV or the uh, growing pornography industry or something like that, you're going to get resistance. Why? Because it's spiritual warfare. And if you want to be fundamental about it from the Bible. So it's really God versus the devil. And there's and, a lot uh, of money involved for lot these, of money, these people too. A lot of money involved. And, uh, you know, that began to organize uh, and begin to contact the advertisers of the, uh, of the networks and asking them to be now, let me interrupt yeah. you. He contacted the advertisers, the people who yeah. were paying the bills to the networks. Yeah. yeah, and he was asking the advertisers, look, the, the networks didn't care about uh, their what they were showing. So he began to see, well, how, well, how does the money uh, come in? So the advertisers, though, they were responsive to, to the mm -hmm. citizens and to the consumer. So we thought, he said, Dad thought, well, if I can you know, get the advertisers to be more responsible, then they'll tell the networks, hey, I'm, we're not going to sponsor on certain kinds of shows that are anti-family or uh, have a lot of sex and violence and profanity on them. So that began to work. And when that began to work, you begin to hit the pocketbooks of the networks, the big networks, and they began to respond. <laughs> now, now did, you get any, they, yeah. did you get any actual criticism from the networks? Did, did, oh, yeah. Did oh, yeah. My dad? yeah. my dad would go on TV. He would go on TV and debate uh, the president of CBS, for example. Really? Yeah. He used to go on the Donahue show. Oh, remember I remember that, that show? one. Yes. Uh, the Tonight Show with uh, with uh, Tom Snyder. That so, goes so way back. He went, back. In, he went he, into he used hostile to go the, territory. Oh, yeah. ABC, Ted Koppel, Nightline. Right, right. Uh, he used to do debates with these uh, folks all the time. Well, now, were they respectful the of him? Or was it, was it uh, uh, how would you describe that? I would no, they weren't because uh, Dad was a, a self-described uh, little uh, preacher from a hick town, you know, basically, <laughs> basically, and that was true. If you listen to Dad talk, you know, he, you wouldn't know that he graduated from Emory in uh, two years on a three, you know, and in, 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 uh, what it was supposed to be a three-year program. Right. That's a pretty. Uh, prestigious school in I Atlanta. Went there. I oh, went Emory, there. you know what I'm there. talking about. Yes. That's not a difficult school. My, my, my point is that uh, they, they probably underestimated my dad a little bit because he didn't look or sound, uh, <laughs> you know, like a sophisticated, uh, educated uh, uh, leader. But, but dad had an anointing uh, of God on his life, and he used his brain that God gave him to, uh, 
to make an impact. And so we began to grow as a ministry, American Family Association began to grow. And one of the big things that we dealt with in the 80s, which uh, lifted our profile even more, was the uh, movie The Last Temptation of Christ. You may oh, remember Mel Gibson. That. Right. No, oh, no, no, that, that you're thinking oh, about. Oh, oh, I'm thinking of Scorsese. Yeah, yeah. That's, the, I'm thinking of the, uh, the Passion of the Christ. You're thinking about the, yes, the, the, yes, the good yes, portrayal. Yes, the good, uh, the good I movie. I remember yeah. the, that was a bad movie. Yeah. I remember. Go ahead. Yeah, it was going. called The Last Temptation of Christ, and it was released in the mid 80s. Right. And it was Martin Scorsese, the legendary. Right. Uh, filmmaker, and he had William Willem Dafoe, I think yes, is the actor's yes. name. He portrayed Jesus, but it was a blasphemous movie. It portrayed Christ, you know, having a f sexual relationship with uh, I remember Mary that. Magdalene. Yes, and so uh, it was a very blasphemous movie. Well, we uh, we protested uh, against that, and had people send petitions in their local communities to their theaters, asking them not to show it. And uh, so that was a very successful campaign for us. Thou hundreds of thousands of people participated, maybe millions. And that film only showed in less than 1% of the theaters. Because I remember the film did not make its money back. No, it no, was a no. financial disaster for no, that No, it studio. didn't, and, and, and we're glad it didn't. And we were so, but you know, that proved again that uh, Christians uh, were under attack in this country for our beliefs. And you, you couldn't portray any other religious group in such a negative way and get away with it in our PC uh, culture, but Christianity was fair game, you know. And so, still is. And still is, sad to say. Uh, uh, but so, but th those are the kinds of things that we begin to get engaged in in, in the culture. And so, that, well, and yeah. I want I want all of you listening to note something that Tim is uh, emphasizing: how critical it is for Christians to become involved because. If you do nothing, the other side easily wins. Mm -hmm. If you do not participate, if you do not uh, vote, if you do not uh, become engaged in these uh, situations, then the other side just will overwhelm uh, Christian values and Christian mm -hmm. beliefs and Christian uh, mm -hmm. ideals. So this is an opportunity for you to see from real life what this man, Don Wildman, Tim's father, did because he cared enough to become involved. Now, if I understand the history that you're describing, Tim, your dad had no training in big media. Mm -hmm. uh, he had not been on major television programs. Mm -hmm. He didn't have a background in this. And that's what I want you to understand. Here was a man who God called mm -hmm. and used because he was willing. Now, I know that those of you watching care deeply for your children. And I hear from many of you, and you are alarmed at the developments in our culture, pornography, um, explosion, the epidemic of uh, overt sexuality, uh, the earlier ages in which uh, children are marketed to with uh, images of sex and violence. I mean, I hear from many of you, and you're very concerned, and you're very worried about this. Well, here is Don and his now his son, Tim, who are doing something in this war, who are winning battles for you. Now, you're going to find out later on in this program, and we're going to do some more shows with Tim, you're going to find out about the American Family Association and how to support them. And I want you to know that this program heartily, enthusiastically endorses what this organization does. Uh, we want you to support them. We want you to help them. We want you to pray for them. And you'll hear more about that as this program develops. But Tim, going back to your dad, mm -hmm. I'm not quite done with that yet. I, when your dad actually left the pastorate, now going back to the very right, beginning, right. he left the pastorate since he had no real experience in this world, right. this secular media world. Uh, what did he do to actually get started? Well, I mean, who, who did he contact? Uh, who did he, how, how did you get people to support? How did you get the word out? Well, the first thing he did was had a what he called turn off the television week for our church family. And uh, that got picked up in the local media. Ah. And uh, so they began, to, he got television interviews and te newspaper, you know. Like, come, why are you doing yeah, this? Yeah, why are you doing this? You know, it was a turn off the television week. Why, why are you doing this? So uh, then uh, that got picked up on the wire. Uh, the, for those who, it's a, it, it would have been yesterday's internet. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so to say, yeah. the wire. And what Tim's described, to those of you who are much younger, right. that these were wire services that actually monitored local news yeah. and they would distribute the, the news nationally. Yes, so, so this little story got national it attention. Yeah. Yeah. It exploded and got national attention. Here's this little uh, country preacher in Mississippi calling for his congregation to turn off the television for a week in protest of the, of the, of the, of the, the changing content, you know, as I mentioned earlier. 
And that got national attention. That's when he went on all these uh, radio and television shows. And, and from there, you know, uh, it just took off like wildfire. And he began to get letters and calls and people f from all over the country saying, hey, I think it's, I'm glad somebody said something because I agree with you. You know, I'm, uh, you know, I agree with you. We need to do something. You know, we need to fight back. You know, we need to let our voices be heard. So that, it just sort of grew and grew and grew uh, from that point. And uh, thousands and thousands of people, we, Dad created a magazine then, and then uh, um, uh, our newsletter. And uh, so things begin to just roll and roll and roll. As I mentioned, uh, the Last Temptation of Christ uh, gained us a lot of new members and a lot of new exposure. Uh, so things began to grow and to change, and we began to get more active, more involved. You know, the names of the people that are familiar with many of your listeners probably from that era that started all about the same time were Jerry Falwell mm -hmm. and uh, also D. James Kennedy. Right. And uh, James, Dr. James Dobson and Phyllis Slafly. She started, I think, in the, in the, six, late sev uh, in the 70s. Tim and Beverly LaHaye. Right. Uh, there are others, uh, uh, Larry Burkett right, and uh, Marlon right. Maddox, and there are some other names that uh, I'm sure I'm, I'm leaving somebody out, uh, some, some, some folks have. But these are names, Pat Robertson started mm -hmm. about that time, maybe a little sooner. The Crouches, uh, I'm just talking about God was raising up uh, what we today know as the, the Christian movement. Right. You know, to make a stand, right. to make a difference. Uh, some people called it the religious right back in the, you know, in the, in Ronald Reagan's presidency sort of, presidency sort of helped bring uh, that group to the fore. And it's been a powerful... And they helped get him elected. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. And, uh, you know, uh, so, so that's, that's been, uh, it's been a long journey, but we've been able to make an impact, make a difference. Well, we all know that it's not easy to make a stand for Christ. And some of you are concerned, maybe you're nervous, maybe you think that uh, you're not sure you want to be in the middle of the whirlwind, <laughs> that you don't want to be in the middle of the fight. But I want you to remember that the purpose of this particular program, again, and I know I've said it before, but I'm just emphasizing this, the absolute priority, the urgency, the critical necessity of taking a stand for Jesus. You cannot let the other side win by default. And one of the things that the, um, uh, the side of our society that opposes Christian values, uh, that is against what we believe, one of the things they like to do is shut us up. They form their own type mm -hmm. of censorship. Mm -hmm. And so we have to have outlets, we have to have ways to, to answer that. And uh, Tim, we're going to talk more about your, the current uh, state of your organization because I want people to know what you're doing. We've got more shows. We're going to explore that. But you mentioned your dad starting um, a magazine, mm -hmm. a newsletter. Mm -hmm. Now, I personally get your AFA Journal. I mm -hmm. think that's the mm -hmm. uh, technical mm -hmm. name of it, the AFA mm -hmm. Journal. Uh, excellent articles. And you have a lot of information there that helps families. Yeah. Uh, moms and dads can access helpful information about their kids, about the culture, about protecting their children. And I know mm -hmm. those of you watching, you want to guard your children. Well, tell us a little bit about the AFA Journal. I'm jumping ahead a bit. Yeah. Let us know about that because yeah. you mentioned uh, that, well, that kind goes, of outreach. That goes to anywhere from 150 to 200,000 people across the country every month. Per uh, month. Per month, yeah. So it's pretty sizable uh, magazine, uh, especially for the Christian community. I don't know who's larger. I'm sure there's probably a larger uh, magazine, but we, it, we're pretty, pretty you got large. A, lot, a big reach. A lot of readers, yeah, big reach. So, but what we try to do is like you're talking about, we try to communicate a biblical worldview uh, on entertainment, on, um, on media, on uh, what's going on in the school system, what are your children being taught there, uh, to be aware of that. Also, we get into the political uh, world. We can talk about that a little bit later on. Uh, because Christians need to be involved no, we're, in we're politics. We're going to do that. Okay, well, yep. Christians need to be involved in politics and government. So we try to have a sort of a comprehensive worldview, Christian worldview expressed in that, uh, in that publication and also what people can do about it. We're very action oriented. We're, very, uh, we're an organization that likes to make a difference. And uh, so that's what we're about. Well, now, how, now we'll, we'll yeah. say this several times so everybody yeah. understands it, but the AFA Journal Excellent resource. How do people get it? Yeah, just uh, go to afa.net. Just go simply go to our website. You'll see that on your screen. You'll go see to afa.net or send us an email. 
uh, there at comments at AFR.net. Comments at AFR.net. AFR. Yeah, American, American Family Radio. It's our radio Family network. Radio. Yeah. Okay. And just send us an email and just say, I want a free subscription to your journal. And it is free. It's free. It's free for six months. <laughs> uh, but then somebody's got to pay for the paper and the ink and, and the postage. That's but we'll, we'll give you an introductory free subscriptions so that people can uh, see what they're getting. In six months, they're going to see what uh, right. this resource can mean to their family. Right. And you know, there's strength in numbers. There really is. If we all join together as a Christian community in this country, those of us who follow Christ, who believe in righteousness and His values and uh, the things that the Scripture tells us we should stand for, then we can make a difference mm -hmm. on our society. You know, we used to be a, America in general used to be a Christian friendly culture. It really did for, for a long time. But then that changed, you know, with Hugh Hefner and with uh, Kinsey and uh, I'm giving you some names, Dewey, and I mean, this, we're going well, back I, I, to... I know the history. You know what know we're talking history. about here. It's where we came from. It's a, it, you, you get, you, they began to develop a very anti-God uh, culture starting back in the 40s and 50s, even that young, and we see what happened with the mm -hmm. 60s with the sexual revolution. So you, so you can't anti. ignore these trends. No. Like, like what's been, happening right. now, you can't close your eyes to it. No, and the other side, uh, th they don't want equal time, so to speak. They want to swallow up mm -hmm. the, the Christians and shut us up. And, uh, and they have ways of doing that. You know, they call us hate groups or they mm -hmm. say we're bigots or whatever the case may be. Uh, they do that to try to, uh, or in some cases they'll, you know, they'll try to shut your speech down mm -hmm. altogether. These are the people that are the most. And, and these, to are, be the these most are also the people who talk about fairness and tolerance. Yeah, and tolerance, but they don't tolerate us. No, <laughs> no they'll tolerate anything but the Christian message. You know, they don't want to hear that. Well, so. And you mentioned something very important. Yeah. I want all of you to yeah. key on this. Tim mentioned spiritual warfare when we started this discussion. He said spiritual warfare, yeah. which means that a very real devil is involved in this. Satan well. is real. Uh, the Greek word satanos means adversary. Mm -hmm. Diabolos in Greek means uh, enemy. And so this is an enemy, a, an actual dedicated, determined enemy. He's smarter than we are. He's been around for centuries, millennia, mm -hmm. and he orchestrates opposition to God. So it is a spiritual warfare. So we need to be alert to that. Mm -hmm. We need to be, and you need to pray for organizations like uh, AFA, American Family Association, because you need God's protection. The last time I was at your organization, uh, I remember I had to check in through several security levels mm -hmm. because you receive threats, don't you, mm -hmm. at your yeah. organization? Yeah, we do. And you've got that, sweet, yeah. nice, good people working yeah. there who are just good people, but they get threatened mm -hmm. because they stand for Jesus. For the very reason you mentioned, it's spiritual warfare. So Amen. So you take a stand for Christ publicly, you're going to get attacked because that's that's been going on. Well, Jesus himself said that would happen, right? Right. So. But there are certain things worth fighting for, and yeah. I know that you watching are convinced that your family is worth fighting for, your children are worth fighting for. And you need to be a part of this process, a part of this warfare, a part of this battle. Now, I don't want you to be intimidated by this. I don't want you to feel like uh, you're not equipped, you're not prepared. It is the purpose of Choose Greatness. Uh, it is the purpose of American Family Association. It is the purpose of organizations like us to help you win the war, especially the battle for the hearts and minds of your children because Remember this always, it is your children who are primarily targeted. The other side, as I am referring to it uh, kind of nicely, mm -hmm. the other side wants your children. They want your kids and they want to uh, bring them into um, a world that does not honor God and follow His morality or His principles. So you need allies, and that's why I'm encouraging you again to support the American Family Association. This is a good organization. I've been down, I think, twice, mm -hmm. and uh, Tim's been nice enough to have me speak uh, to the staff uh, when I've been down there. I know you start bright and early, and, mm -hmm. and uh, I want to tell you something, Tim. When I've spoken to your staff, I have been, and there's been about how many would you say that I speak to when I go down there? Uh, 100 there are or about so, 100 yeah. people, dedicated, wonderful individuals who sacrifice to be a part of this. And when I've been with you on those two occasions, I have been deeply impressed with the integrity, the genuineness, the honesty, and the godliness of the leadership team and the general staff. So my experience with the American Family Association has been 
uh, entirely and completely positive. This is an organization you can trust. You can trust them financially. Mm -hmm. You can trust them spiritually. Uh, they are in the battle for you. They're in the war for your children. Tim, I'm, you've got kids and grandkids, mm -hmm. and uh, you work hard at what you do, and I'm sure that uh, you work hard because you care about the families of America. Oh, yeah. You know, we, we, you know the older you get, the more you, you start forgetting about yourself and you start thinking about the future. Absolutely. Your posterity, right? Absolutely. Your children, your grandchildren, what's to come after you. And you remember the value we were taught as kids, uh, most American children were taught to leave things better, then you found <laughs> then you, them, right? Then you found them. Your grandma taught that. you that, right? <laughs> Leave things better than you found them. And so we need Amen. to have that same approach to our Absolutely. country, right? Yes. We need to leave things better than we found them for those who come after us because there's only one America. There's, only, there's a lot of wonderful places around the world, but there's only one America that stands for freedom and liberty and as a, as justice for all, as they say. You sound so, like Superman. Well, you know, I mean, there, there's a reason people want to come here from around the world. Absolutely. Because, we, because of liberty and freedom and those things that uh, we value. And if we lose those things, and we can, we see history shows us things aren't always necessarily to, uh, tomorrow what they were well, today. I understand. Tim, so we, we want to bring yeah, you back yeah. for a series of programs. Yeah. I want all of you to tell all your friends Tim's coming back on the next show and the next and the next. We'll get as many with him as possible. There's a great deal that he's doing that you have to know about. This matters. This is important. You have to know. And I also want to encourage you to go to choosegreatness.com today. We have organized resources to help you have a great life, you and your children. And I want to encourage you to do two things. Order the book, Choose Greatness, and make that your introduction. It's written for everybody, all ages. It is an introduction to the great principles of God. And then you also want to order an audio set called The Success Test. I'll tell you more about that on our next program. So God bless you. We'll have Tim on a remaining show. And remember, whatever you do, choose greatness.